let's talk about the type node. The type node is located in the field ops palette. This node allows you to specify metadata and data properties. The type node controls the properties of each field. It controls the level of measurement, the data values, the role, and the missing value definitions. This is a depiction of a type node. You can see that we have a field column which specifies the name of each one of the different fields. You can see the level of measurement. You can see the values that are associated with each one of those different fields. And here we can define definitions for missing data. We can also check our data. And we can also define the role for each one of our different variables. So let's go through an example of how to use the type node. Here we have our data set. We have our source node. So I'm just going to edit the source node. And I'm going to go over to the types tab. Now the types tab is going to be almost identical to the type node. I'll talk about the differences in a second. But here's an example of what the type tab looks like. We're going to open up a type node in a second. So I'll just click OK. I'm going to go down to the field ops palette and I'm going to connect the source node to a type node. I'm going to edit the type node. So here we have the type node. Notice that it looks very similar, almost identical to the type tab. All right, I'll talk about what the differences between the two are in a second. But let's talk about what some of the options are that you have here. So you have the uh, field column. The field column gives you the name of each one of your different fields. Now, any one of these different columns, you can sort them if you'd like. So for example, if I click on the field column, I can just click on it and I can sort it uh, in alphabetical order, in ascending or descending order. And I can do the same thing for any one of these other columns as well. Next to the uh, field column, I have the measurement column. And you can see the different levels of measurement that you have. Now, the default level of measurement, that's when the data is not read at all. And so Modeler really has no idea what kind of data that is. A continuous field is going to be a field that is a numeric field. It's going to have a, you know, uh, it's going to be integers, uh, for example, real numbers, uh, dates, things like that, dates and times. This is where the numbers themselves actually mean something. So we might be talking about the number of sales or the score on a test or something like that. So the numbers themselves actually mean something, like age, for example. Categorical, what that means is that it's a, a categorical field. A uh, field like uh, gender, for example, or um, level of satisfaction, where you might have values that range from uh, uh, not at all satisfied to very satisfied or something like that. Now, when you have something that's uh, set up as categorical, like we have right now, notice that we have only fields that are continuous and categorical at the moment. That means that the data is uninstantiated. Okay, That means that the data has not been fully read. So we're going to read the data in a second. But you'll see that all of these fields that have the level of measurement categorical, they're going to change to something else. And so let me talk about what they'll change to. They can either become flag fields. Flag fields have two categories. So it might be a field like gender, for example, or a field where you have values of yes or no or something like that. A nominal level field has more than two categories. So it might be something like, uh, you know, um, which of five products somebody purchased, for example. Uh, an ordinal level field, that's where you actually have um, in a rank ordering to the data. So you might uh, rank people from... Um, you know, in, in a one through five scale from a, a strongly agree to strongly disagree or something like that. Um, or you could also have uh, people ranked on a, a string variable. In that case, you're ranking your data based on uh, alphabetical order. Typeless is um, another uh, type of level of measurement that you have, and that's when none of these others apply. Um, it also could apply to uh, a categorical field that has more than 250 distinct categories as a default. Now, any field that's categorical, once we actually read the data, it's going to become either flag or nominal, or potentially typeless if it has more than 250 distinct categories. Uh, ordinal level fields, a lot of times you'll have to actually um, enable those yourself and specify that they're not nominal, but instead that they're ordinal level fields. So that's, uh, that's the level of measurement that we have. Now, here is the values column. 
The values column right now, notice that it's set to read. So we're going to read the data once we decide to click on the read values button. If the data has already been read and new data has been added in, you can click on read plus. If you don't want the data to be read, you just want it to go right through the node, it, then you would click on pass. You could also just have the uh, current values as well, or you can go and decide and click on specify. Now, I mentioned, I showed the, uh, the type tab earlier, and then I showed the type node. Now, this is the difference between the type node and the type tab. The type node, which we're looking at right now, the default is to read the values. Whereas the type tab, the default is to pass the values. So that would be the difference between the two of them. You can, for the most part, you can use either one. Um, they're going to end up serving the, the same general purpose. Although the type node tends to be more useful because sometimes you're going to, or many times you're going to create new fields and you're going to have to instantiate these fields or fully read the data before you actually uh, build your model. So right before you uh, end up building your model, a lot of times you'll have a, a type node to make sure that you have fully read the data, fully instantiated the data uh, before you actually build that model. So let me click on the uh, read values button here. Notice that the data has now been fully read. Okay. Um, notice that those fields that were continuous continue to be continuous fields. Notice that the fields that were categorical have been transformed into nominal fields or flag fields if they only happen to have two categories. In the values column, notice that you if it was a categorical field, we can see the categories right here. If we happen to have a continuous field, we can see the minimum and the maximum values. Okay. Now, let me uh, mention a couple of other things as well. You have this clear values button. If we had read the data and then we made some additional adjustments, let's say, for example, we didn't want the uh, values to range from uh, 0 to 451 for the variable speakers. Let's say we had put in some restrictions. Uh, we might want to click on clear values. That would clear all the values again. That would allow us to read in the data. If we had specified missing information, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, we could have clicked on clear all values and that would have cl cleared the values that we had set up throughout the whole type node. So that would be the, the difference there. So let's talk about a couple of other, of other options. Um, right now we have continuous and nominal and flag fields. I'm going to change the uh, level of measurement for the field uh, ID from continuous over to typeless because the numbers themselves are just uh, identifying who these different customers are. They're not really uh, telling us, uh, you know, that uh, ID number 31 has more than uh, ID 29, for example, or something like that. So I'm going to change that over to typeless. Notice that a couple of other things changed as well. We no longer care about the values for any typeless field. Notice that uh, missing information has been grayed out as well. Okay, let me talk about some of these other uh, some of these other columns um, right now. Let me uh, go over to the missing column. The missing column, this is where you specify missing information. Let me click on the missing cell for the field stereos. Notice that there's an option to specify missing information. I could also have it as off, which is a default, or I can go and specify. Let me click on specify so you can see a couple of options. Now, up at the top, you have some information on the variable itself. You can see its level of measurement. You can see the way that the variable has been stored. You can see that whether we're going to read from the data, the values, or pass them, or you could specify the values and the labels here as well. You can add in labels if you wanted to. You can also extend the values of the data. That a lot of times becomes useful when you want to score new data, but the original data that you had may not have gone to the extent that the uh, new data is going to go. Now, if we happen to have missing information, you can handle missing information in two ways. You can click on define blanks. And because this is a continuous field, notice that null values are automatically going to be defined. Null values are the type of uh, missing data that you have when you have a continuous field. Now, if you happen to have codes for missing data, you could specify those codes here. For example, if we had a code of 99, for example, I can put that in this first row. And I can add in a second row and I can add in a code of 98, for example, if that was another code for missing information. If I had a whole range of values, 
I can click on the range option and then I can specify the lowest point and the highest point for that particular range. So those are different ways in which I can handle missing information. I'm not going to choose any uh, range option here so I'll just uh, deselect that. Once I click OK, notice that a little star appears in the missing column. That's letting you know that you've handled missing information. If I go to a categorical field, a flag field for example, and I click on that uh, missing cell and go down to specify, if I click on define blanks, all of the other information is the same. Notice that null values are selected but also white space is selected as well. And that's because white space is the type of uh, missing data that you typically have when you have string level variables. So that's why that is selected for uh, any categorical field, flag fields, nominal fields, and ordinal level fields. I'll click OK. If I wanted to uh, select missing values for all of my fields rather than going into each field individually, what I could do is I can right click on any one of the different fields. I can click on select all. And then I can right click on any one of those fields again and I can go down to set missing and then just click on on. And that allowed me to specify missing values very quickly for all of my fields. Again, if I happen to have user defined missing values, if you know where I have a particular code that uh, is representing missing data, um, I'd have to go in to find that individually. Now let's talk about a couple of other options that we have here. We have the check column. The check column allows you to basically check your data to make sure that the data is within the boundaries that you had originally designated. Now the default is set to none. That means that nothing is really going to happen here. If we happen to have any values that are beyond the specified range, let's say for example for a field uh, TVs for example, we know that the values are supposed to go from 0 to 10 and all of a sudden there's an 11 or a 12. If we have uh, the option to nullify, what that's going to do is it's going to make it into a null value. If I have the op option set to discard, what that's going to do is it's going to discard that record that has any invalid information. If I have it set to warn, I'm going to get a warning just saying these are uh, uh, problems that I've encountered with the data that did not meet the requirements that we had set up. Or a board is going to stop the whole process. The option to coerce, what that's going to do is it's going to take your data and modify it. So that if you have a continuous field and you have a value greater than the upper bound, it's going to become the upper bound. If you have a value lower than the lower bound, it's going to become the lower bound. Or if you happen to have a null value or an illegal value, it's going to become the midpoint of the range. If you happen to have a flag field, what's going to happen is that the uh, value is going to become a value of false uh, for anything that's invalid. If you happen to have any type of uh, nominal uh, or ordinal level field, um, that illegal value is going to become the first member of that, uh, of that category. Now let's talk about the final column that we have here, the column called role. The role is basically going to determine what role or what uh, presence each one of these fields is going to have in the models that we build. So for example, any field that is has a measurement level typeless, its role is automatically going to be set to none. And none basically means that that field is going to be excluded from any model that we end up building. So it's not going to actually play a role. Um, we can take a look at some of what some of these other options are here as well. Uh, the uh, role for input, that means that that field is going to be a predictor um, in, the, uh, in the model that we built. So we're going to end up using these fields to make predictions for whatever our outcome field happens to be. Target is going to allow you to specify what your outcome field is going to be. So in our case here, all of these fields are going to have their role set to input, except for ID that's going to have the role set to none. And status is going to have its um, role set to target because that's what we're going to be predicting. Let's look at a couple of other, other options here as well. You have the option for both. What both is going to allow you to do is if you happen to have an a priori model that you're working with, then you can specify that the field that you're using can be either uh, an input or a target. So it could be either the outcome or the predictor in the model. The um, role for partition 
what that does, a lot of times you're going to end up using a partition node for that exclusively, but you could use uh, other fields as well. And basically what the partition option role is going to do is it's going to allow you to specify that you're using a field to basically break up your data into a training data set and then possibly a testing and a validation data set as well. So that you end up building your model on the training data set, but then you can test your model on the testing and the validation data sets. The uh, split role, what that does is it only works for categorical fields and it allows you to specify that a model is going to be built for each possible value of a categorical field. So for example, if I had used uh, the field payment method uh, as a split field, I would end up building a model for the uh, payment method auto pay, I would end up building a model for the uh, payment method check and a separate model for the uh, payment method uh, credit card. Another option, uh, in this particular case, it happens to be grayed out because I have a continuous field, but let me just uh, change that here. If I uh, look at the uh, next option is frequency, that role is going to be used as a frequency weighting factor for a particular record. It can only be used for numeric fields, and it's only supported by a few models. Uh, in this case, it happens to be the CART model, the Chain model, Quest, and the linear model. And it basically allows you to weigh your data as you're developing those kinds of models. And finally, the uh, final role that we have is record ID. And this basically allows you to identify unique, uh, it's a unique record identifier. And this uh, role is ignored by most nodes, uh, but it is supported by the uh, linear model node, uh, which is a particular type of model that you can build. So again, you're going to generally spend a good amount of time working on the type node because this is where you're going to end up setting up all of your metadata for the different fields that you have to make sure that the nodes that follow downstream are reading the data correctly.